Up next, see how one student is heads above the rest when it comes to impacting others' lives. And find out how one school is leading the district in bullying prevention. All this and more. Frisco ISD TV starts now. Welcome to another episode of Frisco ISD TV. I'm Misha Codwell. And I'm Jacob Rimes. Thanks for joining us. Growing up can be hard for anyone, but what do you do when part of you won't grow at all? If you're Purifoy Elementary's Taylor Fujihara, you become an empowered advocate for others with your condition. Morgan Yarnick shows us her story. Some girls love to play with their friends' hair and even their own. Brushing and braiding is not an option for this student who has a life-changing disease and is helping raise awareness in our community. You don't have to be in the hospital or just pretend like you're sick. It's just like you can do whatever you want. You're still, it's just, you don't have to do anything. It's just that your hair falls out and you can do whatever you want. Taylor Fujihara is a second grader with alopecia areata. We caught up with her and her family. I don't know that either one of us or anyone in our family was aware of what alopecia areata was until this happened this summer. According to the National Alopecia Areata Foundation, there are two forms of alopecia areata. Universalis is one, and the most common is totalis, which is the form Taylor has. The immune system basically attacks the hair follicle. It sends out a, a chemical that tells the hair not to grow. And so it's, it's almost like they're allergic to their own hair. So it's not contagious. It isn't caused by stress. It isn't caused from uh, diet, exercise, any of those types of things. It's literally an autoimmune disease that turns itself on and off. And, and at this point, um, there are no uh, cures or drugs or medications that will help turn that system back on. But it's given her a great opportunity to um, educate people about it. Purefoy Elementary was there to support Taylor as she started school with a new look. This summertime, I got an email from the Fitchihari family explaining that they had a concern um, about Taylor starting the school year because of her alopecia and they really had some apprehension about it as any parent would with a change like that. Then on Monday when she came in I know she was really nervous but her friends had been in her class a lot of them in first grade and so when she came in it was a really welcoming environment seeing her friends. Um, I sat her at a table with some of her best friends from first grade and so there really wasn't much of an issue. I mean, the kids love Taylor. She's really funny, really bright, really enthusiastic. So life just kind of went on as normal in the classroom. Well, I didn't really even know what was happening, but I knew that I wasn't going to like make fun of her or anything. I just wanted to be her friend. I thought I was kind of sad because um, she's my best, best friend, and I didn't like whenever that happened. Things have gotten a lot better, and um, school is good and, and uh, the friends and the family and the uh, staff here at the school, everything has worked out fine for us. And so things are getting back to normal. Taylor wanted to tag onto the push for awareness already in place by local figures. Mike Maddox, who is the uh, pitching coach for the Texas Rangers, he has a daughter that also has alopecia. So he sponsored a big section in awareness. And, um, and what they did is they created these bracelets with the baseball theme and then Taylor asked if she could, you know, help bring some awareness by selling some of the bracelets. So we were in touch with Joe De La Sella from the foundation, and he said he would send us uh, 200 bracelets. One of the days this year, we had a um, Hats for Hair Day, and Taylor sold some bracelets for supporting alopecia in the middle of our pod, our little section of the school. And her friends got to come and buy these bracelets to support Taylor and alopecia and they got to wear hats if they bought a bracelet that day. And so it was kind of fun seeing everybody just getting to rally around Taylor and support her. Even with Taylor losing all of her hair, she's found a way to make a difference in our community and is giving back to help others who have alopecia areata. I'm Morgan Yarnick for Frisco ISD TV.
Thanks, Morgan. It's a problem we've all experienced, as witnesses or as victims. Millicent Messina shows us what schools around the district are doing to combat the bullying epidemic. Bullying used to fly under the radar, labeling it as kids being kids. With the surge of technology, the face of bullying has morphed into a bright screen. This middle school and other campuses throughout the district have a goal to push the new bully out. I think bullying is when there's an imbalance of power in some way. Someone being made to feel uncomfortable or, or abused verbally, physically, so that they're powerless to stop it. Bullies are being shoved out with the Always program to release the students of their insecurities. They have meetings where they all get in a circle and they all talk about issues um, that are going on in our school, what's important to them. They talk about solutions, how to solve the problems. One of the main things that the Olveus program talks about is bystanders, the innocent bystanders and how they react to bullying situations. So part of it is to teach them how to help in a bullying situation. Because okay. if they're laughing along with right. the others because they are, they're in that awkward silence, they don't really know what to do, um, they tend to make it more of a problem. But by teaching the bystanders, and there are so many more bystanders than there are bullies and victims, how to handle the situation, our bully problems have really reduced. Teachers explain how bullies treat others as a reflection of how they feel. I think students bully one another um, sometimes because I think they're trying to be funny and trying to get around with one another and they maybe don't realize that they're being hurtful to, uh, to their classmates. I think it's all about insecurity. With, with this age group, insecurity is such a big deal. How kids feel about themselves, how confident they are. I think bullying is a way that people who don't feel great about themselves, they take that out on others. It makes them feel important. It makes them feel big and strong and powerful. It goes back to that imbalance of power. With the surge of social media sites, hurting someone is only a click away. But since the OAS program, students are deleting their negative comments. Online, like Facebook and Twitter, there's a lot of people talking bad about each other. And socially, other people are just trying to make other people feel bad, at, like out of school activities or events or something. I think it's effective because, I mean, we've had people share feelings and what they've experienced. And it, it's like no one laughs at each other in there. I mean, we're all friends, and every person, and we have groups. Everyone has each other's backs in there. And Assistant Principal Farragut thinks students feel more connected. I think it will, it has changed um, since we're almost a full year into it. Um, I believe that students feel more confident standing up in that bystander role, and I think that's the biggest. Um, changing factor of kind of getting rid of bullying. I don't think that we're ever going to get rid of bullying totally, but I do think we can teach kids how better to deal with it um, and how to combat it um, the right way by going to an adult, by seeking counseling, and by um, truly understanding how to deal with the situation. Hiding behind the keyboard changes the everyday bully into a device with no face. Students and faculty are tackling the faceless bullies with this new program with hopes of building a safer environment. I'm Melissa Messina for Frisco ISD TV. You know, it's something we all have to face at one point or another. Yes, I've definitely seen it. It's good to know the district's trying to change things. Many around the district have heard years of rumors about the SOC. Frisco ISD TV's Sydney Gray sheds light on the school and the truth may surprise you. What comes to mind when you think of SOC? They think it's bad students, and it's not. People usually think we're like the rejects or just bad people, but that's not necessarily true. People who get in trouble come here, which is not always the case. Other people say that you're just a low life and or you're stupid or retarded to go here. People think it's a bad school, but to be honest with you, it's not because if they would fall or needed more help in school, then I'm pretty sure they would take advantage of this opportunity that they have. The Student Opportunity Center, or SOC, is a place where students can get back on track with their learning. 
They offer various programs to meet the needs of each student. Basically four programs. We have our discipline program which we call PAC. It stands for Positive Academic Change and uh, even though students are here for discipline we want to make sure that they understand that they are still here. It's still about academics here and uh, we do work with them on their academics as well if they do come over with uh, uh, some academic concerns. But other than that it's uh, pretty much just a discipline program that's set up uh, uh, for, for the district. Uh, we have the ACE program which is Accelerated Curriculum Education. It's for students that have gotten behind and need to catch up and uh, we have the GAP program, great accelerated program. It's for students that are um, over age eighth graders basically and we uh, allow them to come over and get high school credits while trying to finish their eighth grade year so hopefully they will graduate uh, uh, at a more age appropriate time. The PEP program, the parenting education program, we have those girls here that choose to come here. That's a choice. It's not something they have to do but uh, we have those girls here. They are really part of the ACE program as far as accelerating their curriculum. Mm -hmm. It's just that within that program they are in a classroom together and they do we do have the class, the pull out class for those girls to learn about parenting. Teachers and counselors work together to keep students moving forward. We basically have students in our classroom who are from the different six different campuses so we have to be sure that we contact their teachers and see if they have any work they need to make up. I also work with them on emotional issues, you know, counseling issues, um, things that are going on with them with the loss of a parent or um, uh, you know, drug issues or um, anything that's going on with them emotionally I can work with them as well. Students have different reasons for going to SOC. I chose to come to SOC because I was pregnant in October mm -hmm. and I was talking to my counselor and this would probably be the best option because I would get to finish school early. Lewis chose to go to SOC to get used to the different schedule. Well since I've just moved to Texas like six months ago the only thing I can do is relate it to my home campus back where I moved from and it's the same thing except we didn't have four periods, we went eight periods a day, and it was a small school. Everybody knew each other, everybody was friendly, and other than that, I can't really tell a difference. A student currently at SOC for disciplinary reasons wrote an essay sharing their thoughts on the program, stating, What people don't understand is that all the kids at SOC are not bad kids. They each just made a mistake and are here to fix it. The student also wrote, I realized the real truth and that this place is actually a good place where I'm surrounded by good people. Life situations may prevent students from getting the credits they need. This center gives students the opportunity to be successful. Our students are just like any students walking the halls of any campus and uh, they uh, they just get a chance to come over here. We offer the smaller atmosphere, the uh, uh, um, online courses that, uh, are, that our teachers support to give them a chance to catch up. I'm Sydney Gray for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks Sydney. I think it's really great that the district provides a place for students to find success. Most American businesses begin with entrepreneurs, driven people with a vision and a product. One district program is encouraging potential entrepreneurs to create the businesses of tomorrow. Our company is a sports tutorial website. Uh, online. I'm the owner of Pimple Paintballs, a paintball company that delivers high quality paintballs to a, for a lower price. Students with drive looking to make it in the business world are given the chance to pave their own way with the help of a new academy in Frisco. YEA is a 33 week program. It runs with the school year and where we take the kids through an entrepreneurial experience. So the idea came to the Chamber of Commerce first from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and felt that Frisco would be an ideal city based on the number of students and the growth to have a program of this nature for our kids to get exposed to entrepreneurship. The young entrepreneurs went through many stages to get to their final product. So the first 11 weeks is really them getting an idea about what it takes to build a business and getting their idea on a paper and really flushing out that idea. So the next 11 weeks is them taking their idea and putting it into a business plan. And that's looking at the marketing plan, the financials, the legal part. So all the different parts of a business plan, they work with mentors who are also part of the community to complete their business plan. Then at the end of that, when they have the business plan together, they pitch to investors. And that ends like the second section of the class. So once they pitch to the investors about this is the kind of funding I need to start my business, then they pitch and if their idea is good, then they get funding. 
And then we spend the last, I'd say, 11 weeks getting them from the, the standpoint of now you have funding, now how do you get your business rolling? Valuable lessons were relayed to the students to prepare them for the business world. Well, it's really taught me how to develop a business with a business plan, marketing, production, and all that stuff to just help me know how to run a business when I'm older. If I ever decide to uh, keep going with my company or start any new ones, I'll know how, exactly how to do the business plans. One lucky student came out of the investor panel of Victor and got to go on a special trip. I got to go to Rochester, New York and compete in the Saunders Scholars Competition. So they flew us out on a Wednesday night and then we competed in semifinals on Thursday. Unfortunately, I didn't advance to the finals, um, but it was still a really good experience because we got to, I got to see all the other businesses from across the United States. Being one of the few female students in the program, Andrea wasn't intimidated to give her input. I think it's good sometimes to like share my ideas with the guys and they're like, yeah, that's a valid idea. I was like, I know, yeah, girls have a good ideas too. So it's kind of been good. I think it's been a good group of kids, the mixture of us, we're from all over Frisco. So it's a good combination there as well. We hope to see success from students who are part of the Young Entrepreneurs Academy. Who knows, you might have just seen the next great business plan. I'm Lexi Rodriguez for Frisco ISD. TV. If we're going to improve this economy, we're definitely going to need more of those young innovators. Yeah, seeing that story gives me a lot of hope for the future. That wraps up our show. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Frisco ISD TV. Join us next time as we see how a dentist takes her practice outside of the office and CTE Center students who in turn with some who like to bark their orders. I'm Misha Caldwell. And I'm Jacob Rimes. Thanks again for being with us. <laughs>